Hello and welcome to today's lesson from the GCSE PE portal. Today we're going to be looking at freely movable joints. Now in our bodies we have three types of joint. Immovable, slightly movable and then freely movable. Immovable joints, an example could be our skull, are where bones are really close together if not fused together and no movement between them is possible. Because obviously for our skull or cranium we wouldn't want any sort of movement happening because that could lead to damage uh, towards the brain. So we've got immo immovable joints. Next we have slightly movable, which is normally caused by some space in between the bones, but it's filled with cartilage. Now cartilage is that sort of spongy, tough, rubbery tissue that's found in a lot of joints and around the body, and it's there to protect surfaces of bone, but in some instances, for example, the vertebral column, so in between different vertebrae, we've got layers of cartilage in between them, where as we sort of bend side to side and forwards and backwards, that layer of cartilage gives just a little bit and it allows some movement. That's why we call them slightly movable. The third type of joint, which is what you need to know most about come your GCSE exam, are freely movable joints. And there are two different types that you need to know, and they are hinge joints and ball and socket joints. So hinge joints and ball and socket joints. Now the one that we're going to do first are, is the hinge joint. Now it only allows, oh, just like a door for example with a hinge, it only allows movement forwards and backwards. Okay, so one plane of movement, two directions, forwards and backwards. Around our body we've got three examples. We've got the knee joint, we've got the elbow joint, and for your exam, you're going to be classifying the ankle joint as a hinge joint as well. Because if you think about these three joints on your own body and what movements you can produce, there's only really two, which is up, down, in, terms of, in, in regard to your elbow. At your knee, you've got up, down, and then at your ankle, you've got up, down. You can't really move them side to side because the shape of the bone or ligaments or you know, muscle tensions, they get in the way. So you're actually prevented from moving that joint in any other direction. So a hinge joint, we've got two directions of movement, forwards and backwards, in one plane. A more freely movable joint, even though they are both freely movable, the more so is the ball and socket. And we've got two types of these in our body. We've got our shoulder joint, and we have our hip joints. Okay, so the shoulder and the hip. Now for the ball and socket, it's as if you've got, well, think of that, uh, that sort of shape there, the forearm into fist. We've got that ball at the end, that spherical shape at the end of the long bone, and it fits into a cup-like sort of recess in another bone. So if you think of your hip joint, you've got your pelvis where there's a gap or a hole in, in the side of it, and the top of your femur has that spherical circular you know, head to it, and it slots in, that means you can rotate it, you can lift it, you can, you know, you can move it multi-directionally. So lots of different ways in which you can move the bones that meet at a ball and socket joint. Okay, so we have hinge joints, such as the knee, elbow, ankle, we've got the ball and socket joints, shoulder and hip, both of which are freely movable joints. Now, when it comes to talking about and getting assessed in freely movable joints, you need to be able to talk about what might limit the movement, because you know, even though you know, we are saying they're freely movable, there are limitations, there are restrictions to both of these, or all of these, I should say. And things which might implicate movement could be bone shape. You know, bones are spherical in shape. They're quite odd, they're quite bumpy, the surfaces are uneven. So as bones begin to articulate around each other, it might be that two parts of two different bones collide and they can't move past each other. A second thing could be ligaments. Ligaments connect bone to bone. Okay, tough, fibrous, almost elastic bands, if, if you will, which pull two or more bones together in towards a joint or where these bones are beating. And they serve the purpose of keeping the joint under tension, so they stop these bones from moving away from each other. If these bones were to move away from each other, that's when you get something called a dislocation. 
So, you know, a sport, a common, well, not common, but, you know, a sports injury that might occur to someone could be a dislocation. For example, a dislocated shoulder in a rugby tackle could be from a high impact force knocking that bone away from where it's meant to be. Those ligaments are likely to have been stretched, maybe torn, in order for those bones to move apart. So these ligaments are there to protect us, okay? They're, they're there to keep the joint safe and stable and moving properly, but it does mean that it limits the range of movement possible at these joints. So we've got the shape of bone, we have ligaments, we also have muscle tension, because muscles, um, they, sort of, they sort of flow down and they, they gradually become tendon, which is, you know, for, for all intents and purposes, a thicker, stronger, denser version of muscle. And it connects the actual muscle to a bone. So if we don't have a very pliable muscle, when we try and move these bones, they're gonna tug on the tendon, which in turn tugs on this really tight, inflexible muscle, and the bone is gonna to have to stop moving. So we've got bone shape, we've got ligaments, and we have muscle tension. Ligaments we can't really improve. Bone shape we can't really change, but if a performer were to undergo some flexibility training, it might be that they can improve their muscle pliability and flexibility and increase the range of movement at their joints. Okay, so just to recap, we've got three different types of joint. We've got immovable, such as the cranium. We've got slightly movable, such as the vertebrae, where the cartilage in between sort of squashes and shifts around to allow some movement. And then we have freely movable joints. Two examples in the body being hinge joints and ball and socket joints. You need to know hinge joints as being the knee, elbow and ankle, where you've only got two directions of movement. And then ball and sockets, we've got shoulder joints and hip joints, where they're multi-directional. There are some limiting factors, however. We've got ligaments, which keep the joint under too much tension for them to move apart. We've got different structures or shapes of bone, which can't move past each other. And then we've got muscle tension. Inflexible muscles, if they can't stretch, then the bones they're attached to can't move any further, and we inhibit the range of movement. And that's that. I hope you found that useful. That was three movable joints, and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank <laughs> you.